real windy. So I wanted to I want to make a few comments, but I wanted you to see Crow and Claire. And this is Patrick. Hey Dad. Patrick. Hi. And there's another brother here, but he's not gonna be a good one. Very interesting. They're gonna head out, so I figured I'd I'd let you see some of the friends. Crow, any word, any particular word? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego here. Now, okay, and then you, you, you should know the scripture already. And y'all know me by the videos. Who's that fourth one? Who's the fourth one? Everybody think Jesus. All right, we have a new guy in our midst. His name is Patrick. God bless him. He's trying to keep him safe from harm. I tell him to stay away from the youngsters and stay with the elders. We want to steer him wrong. Amen. God bless. Amen. This is Patrick. He just showed up, but. Let me bless you, Patrick. Father, I pray a blessing on Patrick. Give him protection, work in his life, and uh, do do your will in his life. Let this little experience this day in the bluff or so, uh, let it stick with him. If you remember that, uh, you are wrong. God's real. God's here. Bless Patrick in Jesus' name. All right. I'm going to talk. I'm going to talk a little bit. I would have this other. Yes. Uh, I'm going to the Dollar Tree to get some food. I love y'all. Claire quoted, now what is that story? My Bible students, what is the Bible is in the book of Daniel? Those were the three children that were cast into the fire. Not birth, this is birth. They came, they came out and they didn't even have the smell of fire on them. That was a deliverance. They went and told the king. They said, how many people did you want to go into the fire? There's three. There's four now. They're walking around and there's no fire. Well, only three in there. Because Jesus is walking with them. Yeah. 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 We'll see you, Carl. I, I just want to get we'll my friends. We'll be back in a minute. On. Yes, I'm going to hang out a little right. bit and then take off. I'd let this brother, it's on me, brother. I'd let him share because we were having a good fellowship. But he's, uh, I just met him today, but talking about a lot of scriptures. I wanted to, I got to get out of the wind. I did the last video on the Harbor Bridge and it was windy. I'm going to get right behind the tree, I guess. I'll do a little update. I mentioned, I don't know if you heard it, but my, my daughter and... My son-in-law are actually still at my mom's house in New Jersey, and today they're in New York City. So I guess they're still there because they texted me. But today in Times Square, as I was listening to the news, trying to do a few videos, um, somebody ran into a bunch of people in Times Square. One person died, and a bunch of people were injured, and initially they thought it could be one of the terrorist things. Supposedly, it's not. It was somebody, the young kid that's drunk, that was drunk. But either way, I didn't know if my kids were actually in New York today, but they are today. They are in New York. Uh, but they were on the ferry going over and over. So uh, I wanted to update that. Um, the lead singer of, uh, of Soundgarden, I liked Soundgarden. I think they just did a concert in Detroit, but the news today was he died. And I just checked the update on the news, and he hung himself. He committed suicide. So it's very sad. And as I also Googled CNN news, I could have, I could have prophesied this. CNN had on one of their feeds on the online news, what did Mike Pence know and when? Well, some within our country and some within the media. I, I, some of my liberal friends honestly believe that Trump is unfit, and I understand all that. And so they believe he'll either resign, there's a push for that, or go through impeachment proceedings. But I was thinking just yesterday, or earlier today, 
I said, how long will it be before they try to say, Pence also, the vice president, will be unfit? Sure enough, it was on CNN on the feed. What did Mike Pence know? I'm assuming that some would prefer, I'm not sure what the next step would be, if you could disqualify, get rid of one president, and, and not let his, uh, I believe the House has, uh, Congress has to vote or something. We, we have a lot of problems. The things you did not catch on video, because of the last one, which was the Harbor Bridge, I actually was doing a little bit from some of the scriptures I'm going to teach in the next day or two. I'd stand over here, but i got to be behind a tree, and hopefully you can hear this one. But there was a scripture in Acts 13, which I still have to teach that chapter. But Paul the Apostle, when he's given preaching the gospel, he tells them, his hearers, he says, Beware lest that comes upon you which was written in the prophets, that I will work a work in your day which you will not believe, even if it's declared unto you. And that's uh, either Haggai 1.5 or Habakkuk 1.5. I forget which one. I already wrote that verse on the post. It's 5.30 now, so this will go up. But it was interesting because that was a judgment prophecy upon the people that were hearing truth, hearing the gospel. And he said, beware, because when truth goes out, I'm not talking politics here, I'm saying, we live in a country and in a time where we question, how do we know what's real? How do we know what's reported to us? How do we know things are coming to us? But when we hear truth from God, this new brother I was just talking to was sharing some of how we respond. Peter himself says, the stone that the builders rejected became the head of the corner. This is the Lord's doing in his marvelous in our eyes. And whoever believes on that stone is not going to be ashamed of being found it. We know that from God and Scripture, we can trust that. Okay? We live in a day where people are questioning what they can trust and believe. So I kind of made a few comments on that. And on an upcoming teaching, which I already did, I'm talking about, it's Kings chapter 6, but I'm talking about the rest, uh, the building of the temple. And when Solomon builds the temple, he does carvings on the inside of the temple. Because it's covered, the inside is with cedar wood. And he carves, there's pictures of angels, pictures of ve vegetation. And... Why would that kind of be almost pictures of an angel in a garden? Why would that be included in the temple? Now, I'm going to teach this in the upcoming video. But the temple represented men coming back to God through atonement. Because you have a sacrificial system. You have everything that I've taught in the past. But it showed that it was through blood or sacrifice pouring in Jesus that men could be restored back, quote, to the garden, back to God. That's, that's what those images represented in the temple, which had the Holy of Holies and the presence of God in the temple. But we read in the book of Genesis that when men sinned, they were cast out of the garden, and there was an angel with a fiery flaming sword that said, you can't now come back. You're no longer welcome in the presence of God because of sin. But we as believers, so how do we get back? How do we have the presence of God, which we do? It's because we've already died. The scripture talks about the word of God as a sword. And when we believe the word of God, we've died to ourselves. We're buying pulses in Galatians. I'm crucified with Christ, and unless I live, yet not I, but Christ lives in me. And so that's also an image of how those who are dead, if you will, they've experienced crucifixion, they've identified with Christ. Now they have access back into the garden, past the angel with the sword. The only people that can get in are dead people, all right? Now I could do a little bit more on that. Not physically dying, but that of course happens as well. But we die to ourselves, okay? 
and, and so some of those and uh, some of those things I added a few scriptures like that and I wanted to do one last one because I reviewed the previous Harbor video I still posted it those who'd like to see that view so my kids are all right and I got to see Claire and Crow and Claire shared that great story of deliverance from the book of Daniel and uh, the fourth was like unto the son of God I might add a few more verses that's it for today um, the news I watch it and I read it and of course it affects all people but when you see bias okay when you see things that you know okay at that point it's not honest uh, reporting we have problems in this country and there are some legitimate things now that a special uh, special counsel has been appointed to look Robert Mueller, former FBI guy. Look, there, there's some problems going on. But today, in the world, there are also some big problems. The U.S. actually uh, killed and bombed some Syrian troops, troops of Assad. Now, we've not been doing that. That happened today. I think it was a long Turkey war. And the report in the news was these were Assad's army approaching one of our camps where our men are. We still call them advisors. But we had military boots on the ground in Syria. And as they were getting close, we gave warnings to them that, you know, we're not going to let you come and uh, engage. And supposedly, Russia also told Syria, Assad, stop, don't keep moving forward. But they kept coming. They were ready to have an, a conflict with U.S. troops, is what that was. And whether or not Russia also warned those troops to stop or not, I don't know. That's what it was reported. But they still might be, uh, their reasons, long-term reasons, I'm not going to repeat them all. But as the world looks at our situation, the world also is not playing games. <laughs> Where some of the actions we have taken on sanctions against Russia are intended to cripple that economy of Russia. And to cripple them to the point where there would be a depression and an upheaval in Russia, destabilizing that country and maybe eventually ousting. Some of the actions we have taken under the previous President Obama are still in effect. Those are the sanctions. And I don't want to repeat it all, but some honest commentators think we're unjust in what we're doing there, but we're letting that go, these sanctions. And so it's still possible that they want to engage in a greater action, meaning involve something bigger something else that would happen. So, as we are all caught up in a lot of the stuff that's going on, uh, there are real world events. And people are watching this, what's going on in this country. And it's kind of a dangerous time. So, I'll, and this is the little one I wanted to do. I'd have that other brother say, hi, we've been having a good conversation. I never met that guy before, but uh, we've been got an interesting story. So that's it for today. Uh, God bless everybody. I'll upload this right now and I'll be the last one for tonight.